Hello, welcome to Conversations at theholenote.com. I'm here with Noel Edison, who's the conductor of the Toronto Mendelssohn Choir. Thanks for being with us. So, Noel, what did I drag you from for this late night interview? Uh, our second rehearsal of the season. We started last uh, Monday, um, and we're, we're, we're very busy right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a Beethoven's Ninth with, uh, with the, the symphony in a week, week or two. Right. And um, then two weeks after that, we have uh, the Lord Nelson Mass of Haydn and the Mozart Requiem. That's at Kerner. That's a Kerner. Yeah. And this is your grand 120th anniversary. 120th celebration, yes. Uh -huh. I won't ask you if you were there at the first. Uh, <laughs> exactly. you no, I think everyone has moved on from the very first day. But your mother was in the Toronto Mendelssohn yes, Choir. Yes, she was. She was in the choir in the 50s. Right. Um, and in fact, uh, she's in the soprano section, uh, and she became uh, the parents my parents were very good friends with the Macmillans, Lady right. Mac and Sir Ernest. Right. And my parents uh, used to host the post-Messiah parties at their house in okay. Rosedale. Uh, now this is all before I was born, but apparently right. uh, Vickers would come in and he'd announce his presence, his arrival with a big ringing high note and some apparently shattered glass or something, so the, <laughs> the family lore goes. But, um, but you know, those parties, they would be late. I mean, Messiah in those days would start at eight and end around one. Oh, all the repeats? All the, the repeats, bit. and you know yeah. those temples in the 1950s, I mean, mm. comfort in every valley, I think, took close to 15 minutes. <laughs> sheep may safely graze yes. if they ever get there. That's <laughs> right. So um, they were all night affairs. But Do you uh, have memories of, uh, as a child of attending Mendelssohn, or was your mother? No, she was not in, no. She, when Sir Ernest retired, she retired uh, okay. in the late, or early 60s, I guess. When, I think when Elmer took over. Um, and no, I, I, I remember as a boy, when I was singing in a choir, uh, singing the Ripieno parts of the St. Matthew Passion at Massey Hall with Elmer. Um, I remember being involved in several adventures like that. Did I go to a concert or two? I'm sure I did, but I can't quite remember. Uh, not your first Hallelujah chorus. Well, or, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't remember Probably. going to a Messiah, actually. Interesting. So getting back to this, this rehearsal, so part of it is the, <clears throat> is the, the, Beto the Beethoven Ninth with the TSO. Yeah. But the choir gets handed over to Peter Ungen. to Peter for yeah. the the performance. So what's it like handing the baby over to? Not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> no. No, it's just like uh, I don't mind it at all. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, you know we're hired to do a, the chorus job, and we discipline it, do it well, mm -hmm. hand it off, and do it. Um, and it's exciting for the choir to work with different conductors. Right. That's integral to artistic validity of any ensemble yeah. um, and you know we work with Peter a lot we've got Andrew Davis uh, we work with various different people and messiahs we're doing and we've got a lot with the symphony this year in fact we had to turn down a couple or one uh, an Elgar Gerontius because we just couldn't do it all plus our own season plus the other things that we do yeah it's a big commitment yeah I mean when I was just saying to you David before we started that the choir started this year and we're 24 percent are new people wow. it's not that a lot of people left only about two um we've done a we, the numbers have been small for a while and, and i'm going to build them back up a little bit mm -hmm. but uh, that's 24 people who have not done a mozart requiem generally because these are young people that right. i'm getting in i don't know where they're coming but it's they're coming out of high school not high school but universities right um, great community problems, but the average age of the young people coming in are in the mid to late 20s. Wow. And the average age of the Mendelssohn Choir are now probably about 39, 40. <laughs> so it's a um, it's much younger ensemble than when I started 19 years ago. <laughs> wow, but you can't take for granted, therefore, that any piece that you do is, uh, is a war horse or part of everybody's well, repertoire. Well, uh, that's a good question. Messiah tends to be right. pretty well I mean, everyone knows that. I mean, and they, you know, there's a lot of carry on from previous years. So a lot of people have done these mm -hmm. things. Um, so Messiah, we don't spend a lot of time on. I basically just give markings for whatever conductor's coming in. Right. Um, but if you're doing a Verdi Requiem, no, no. 
Do you know, we did a show last spring with the symphony. We did a Learner and Low show. Mm -hmm. And I said to the choir, and uh, how many of you in this choir have not heard of Learner and Low? 40% of the choir had not heard of Learner and Low or the sound of music. Sure. These are younger people. That's just not their, but they yeah. listen to. Then a month later, we did Porgy and Bess by Gershwin. Right. 60% of the choir had never heard of it. Right. I mean, this is like, I mean, I'm excited for the young energy in the group. Yeah. But it just, boy. But the records you listened to yeah. at home as a kid, those were, those were. The well, they don't listen to records anymore. The yeah. CDs are all gone. True. It's all, if it's not on the YouTube. Yeah. Or, but uh, they're great people. Um, it's a really tough audition. I don't hear them sing until they get through a really tough rhythmic audition mm. first. And once that's done, if they pass that with flying colors, then I'll listen to the voice. Hmm. But the rhythm has to be first and foremost, and so that's, hmm. and it's proved to be very successful. I mean, I've had two rehearsals this season, and there, last week, we polished three quarters of the ninth. We read through the whole Mozart Requiem without too much road, road kill. Basically, right. got through without a problem actually, and half of the Mo and half of the Haydn. Well, that's pretty phenomenal. That is in an is. opening night of a new rehearsal year. So you, you left that rehearsal in the, in the loving hands of who? Oh, my associate, Karen oh. Daly. Oh, okay. We started this associate conductorship four, th three years ago. Right. Matthew Otto was in for two years. Karen's now starting her second year with me. Right. And so, uh, yeah. Sure. Well, the, David, my biggest, biggest thing have been with, with singers is rhythm. Mm -hmm. It's always about rhythm. Singers don't generally think rhythmically. Mm -hmm. They think in a little more sustained legato, they think of sound, beauty, you mm -hmm. know, long lines and tone and all that sort of stuff. But they don't think of the, the, the many... So you were saying the pre-audition is a rhythmic one it's before all rhythm you now, even hear them? Before you even hear the voice. Yeah, you know, they've got to be able to understand musically the tools of the, of the rhythmic. Because mm -hmm. upon that house you can't, there's, if there's mm -hmm. not that foundation, you, there's no way you can put up any walls or a roof on that one. Mm -hmm. So, Elora and Mendelssohn, is it a juggling act, or does it just feel like comfortable two halves of... Uh, uh, it's a comfortable a two halves, actually. Uh, sometimes there are some conflicts, but not a lot. There mm -hmm. can't be, uh, just because I've got singers that are in both. Right. And I'm in both, so we have to watch it. Sometimes at Messiah, or in the... Uh, we have a few little conflicts, because my singers are, get, tend to get busy and we might have to pull some singers and replace them with some others. But generally it works out. Mm -hmm. um, I have two managers, uh, one in Alora and one in Toronto, and they're both good friends. And then I have uh, uh, one assistant, uh, Esther, who programs it all for me. Right. And she sets it all up for me and gets the schedule. And between that and the church choir, which is mm -hmm. also a professional choir, fully paid. Um, so it's, it's exciting. It's an exciting artistic endeavor. Mm -hmm. Costs a lot of money. <laughs> both, constantly fundraising. Both or you all? Had, yeah, I'm sure the the summer festival landscape is a, it's a tough one. Yeah, the uh, church choir, for example, it's a really good group. It's fully paid. There are 22 singers, and that's close to a hundred thousand dollar budget for a year just for a church choir. That's at Saint, Saint, Saint John's. John's yeah. in that's about one of the only true professional, all professional choirs in the country, mm -hmm. in the church. Mm -hmm. EFS and the Mendelssohn and the festival, that's a significant budget, uh, close to a million, if not just over it. Mm -hmm. And Mendelssohn's also somewhere in that neighborhood too. So that's a, that's a lot of money mm -hmm. going out artistically every year. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, it's well supported by the granting agencies, but more importantly, it's well supported by a lot of uh, individuals. Right. I have a I have a very I have a very fond memory, um, an incidental almost memory uh, at at Elora. I don't know how many years ago, but uh, Dan Taylor was there, mm -hmm. and it was Gamble Barn. Mm -hmm. I think it was Stabat Mater, but I I couldn't be certain. But there was a party. We ended up back at your place. Right. Uh, that seems to be the entertainment party. center. That seems to be. Uh, you were talking about your parents' party right, place. That's in right. Rose that's there. right. I grew like up with that. That's right. Maintained the tradition. That's right. Uh, late was definitely part of it. Yeah. And uh, there was there was a moment at which um, 
you have this piano in this lovely, mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it a sunroom, it would kill the piano, but this lovely little conservatory, Off the, beautiful yes, space. Right. And uh, you called Dan over to the piano and you had a piece of sheet music and he, he sight sang a song in, on that particular evening. And it was, uh, it was a piece that Lois Marshall used to sing. Oh, A Fond Kiss. A Fond Kiss. Right. And he sight sang it for the first time. I don't think he knew the oh, piece. Oh, he didn't of, know the piece. I don't oh, think he gosh. knew the piece. And that was one of those absolutely priceless, priceless moments, moments uh, because of the power of the voice in the intimacy yeah. of the space yeah. and, and everything else. It was just one of those really oh, magic lovely. moments. I, I was at Lois that. Marshall's memorial. That was a beautiful memorial when it ended with them taping in, piping in her singing that A Fon Kiss. I mean, oh. she was one of the great, great Canadian yeah. sopranos. I mean, and now that her playing it at her final concert is now available on YouTube. Oh, really? It is. You oh, can hear Lois I'm sure it herself is. at the piano. No, not at the piano. Uh, who was at the piano? I can't, I can't remember. I don't know who was at the piano. But you'll know when you see Oh, okay. You should take a look at that. I list. will. Somebody sent me a video clip actually the other day of Healy Willen conducting ah. his choir at Heart House, I think ah. it was. And they're doing his Hodie Christmas thing. And there he was. He's not a very good conductor. <laughs> but I tell you, the choir for the 1950s or whenever it was, it was actually not bad. Yeah. It was quite, I heard from people who experienced it live that it was really some of the best singing in the city, some of the best disciplined singing, and it was very good. Huh. The outfits are amazing. The women in the great big gla horn room glasses and everything else, it's, it's quite a period piece. But it was, I was quite amazed at the standard. So it's too early to talk about legacy, but let's talk about legacy. What do you think you've... What's your stamp on the Mendelssohn in the Gosh. commissioning? Well, outreach. there's been a what? Um, well, um, there'd be a couple of things to be honest with you. Commissioning has not been a big part of it, and that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's bloody expensive now. Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, there's so much other, there's so much good stuff that's already been written, that's out there, that's presently written, mm -hmm. you know, that's been just written in the last two years that I just like to do. Um, I would like to tackle a significant commission uh, with a significant composer. I still want to do one of those. And I've still got a couple of mine that I'm uh, pending on. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the outreach has been an important part of it with Cynthia, our executive director, who's worked very hard at that. Um, the developing of young conductors in mm -hmm. my, my teaching week yeah. that come in from North America. The appointment of a young conductor assistant mm -hmm. um, who gets podium time every week mm -hmm. and podium time in concerts. Um, so, and I think that's very important because when I grew up, that was not available. Everyone was a closed shop. They wouldn't let anyone really? near it. Um, and I don't think that's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and I love to teach that sort of art form because I think it's a very valid one. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and I think that, and mainly the other thing is the sound of the choir. Mm -hmm. It's a very different sound now. It's a far warmer tone to me. It's the tone I love. I love that warmth. I love that rich sort of Mahlery and Mm -hmm. chocolatey sound. That's the sound I, I very much express with. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the sound follows the personality of whoever's in front of them. Mm -hmm. A choir is only as good as who's standing in front of it, just like an orchestra. I've heard bad choirs with great conductors sound fantastic. I've heard great choirs with bad conductors sound awful. Mm -hmm. It's just whoever's at the podium. So you've got to take on that personality. And the same with orchestras. They just, you pick up in the DNA, you pick up mm -hmm. in the air, you just know if there's going to be some magic spiritual happening or not. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few things that I'd like to do before we finish, before I, my reign finishes. Um, I want to get out a very significant recording okay. um, with an international star, uh, an orchestra and the singers. And I want to get a few more um, tours down to, um, 
well, I want us singing down in New York, I want us singing in Boston, I want us singing, I want to exchange with all the big choruses of the big American cities. Mm. Um, and there's a big Christmas spectacular the, of the whole city that I'm planning with big international Canadian names uh, out of Hollywood. Soon or? Oh, well, it'll be a few years. We've got to just start at the committee. Okay, so there's a it'll be very few years of plans. What about the great oratorios? Do you think you've got most of them or are they? Well, any? we've done the main ones. Uh, there's some other ones that I haven't done that I want to do with some yeah. Dvorak, Stabat Maters. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some, um, but we've done all the, I, I have to purposely, even the part of the mandate is to cycle through all mm -hmm. the great oratorios. Mozart Requiem, we have, the choir hasn't done it in, gosh, well, I haven't done it with them in years. Right. Uh, the last time they did it, I was on sabbatical. Evers hmm. Torrens conducted it. Okay. So I haven't done it with Mendelssohn in many, many years. Hmm. Um, but we, you know, we do Brahms or a Verdi. We either do it with the symphony or we do it our own series. Hmm. We've, um, I want to do a Britain War Requiem, but Britain is hard to sell. It's difficult. It's very sad. Yeah. And it's a great, great work. Um, Didn't the choir do that with the TSO? We did. Uh, four, three, four three years, years, years ago, ago with Andrew Davis. Ago? Three or four years ago. And that mm. didn't sell there either. Yeah, well, there were an awful lot of poppies glaring down from the balcony, I remember, but it right. wasn't a full house. No. no. No, it wasn't. And we did a Britain program in the beginning of last year of his two, or two uh, cantatas, um, oh, The Company of Heaven and St. Nicholas. Right. Most people did not know the Company of Heaven. If you knew of them, you'd know the St. Nicholas. It was moderately successful, but it wasn't, it was artistically fantastic with the Toronto Children's Choir and the right. orchestra, and it was great. Great soloists. But it, you know, it didn't attract the thousand people we usually attract. Mm -hmm. um, so it took a bit of a hit, but it was artistically important. Yeah. I asked the symphony in the big Britain year last year, why are you doing the war wrecking? Because it's too expensive and it doesn't sell. It's, so it's a juggling act. Yeah, well, you know this, David. I mean, it's worthwhile. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's very worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, but I've got, uh, you know, part of the success of, if there is to be success, I don't know how you measure success, but uh, I've, I'm surrounded with very, very good people. I've got, you know, really good people with whom I work. Great boards, terrific boards. Um, great managers, executive directors, it's, and that's really important when all those components come together. Mm -hmm. that, makes, that makes it far more cheese, you know, a joy, yeah. as you know. I do. As Thank any team knows. Absolutely. That's what makes it. Thank you. Thank you, David. This has Thanks been for fun. coming in. This has been a nice... Yeah, nice I chat. don't like talking about myself. Ah. So it's, it's nice to do it in a very quiet, intimate setting. Well, it's good. Thank you. I've enjoyed it a lot. Thanks. And thank you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.